This one's brought to you by Skillshare, but we are going to talk about that later. So a simulation like that is basically not possible in default Blender. So I'm going to show you how to make this hydraulic press simulation and in the future, even crazier simulations using an add-on called Molecular Plus. It used to be called Molecular. That's literally 11 years ago. It's been updated. So link in the description for where you can download that. But once you install the add-on, you're going to see not Molecular, this is the old version, but Molecular Plus that has been updated for uh, Blender version 4.0 and it's just much nicer. So what this add-on does is it lets us use particle simulations, default particle simulations, but much more advanced ones. So once you have this in the end menu, you're gonna see this panel. We're gonna start off with the cube. This, we're gonna make a 3D grid, which you can see fills it up with particles and in the background, literally makes a particle system with extra settings in the physics tab. That's fine. I'm going to also add a collider. So this is the ground plane, make that a collider. And when I hit play, uh, it does a normal physics simulation, nothing fancy, right? This is what would happen by default, right? And uh, this is a collision object, right? Super simple. So. The beauty of Molecular is it has these four buttons. These are what matters. This first one lets particles interact with each other such that when I now hit simulate, it's going to do a new kind of simulation. This is a molecular simulation. And you can see now the particles actually respond to each other. This is something that's not possible in a default blender. And then basically the second button that matters is this one. This is called linking, which lets particles attach to each other until they break apart. So now if I click particle linking, I click simulate, this actually stays as one chunk such that when it plays, it's kind of like a soft body. It holds its rigidity. And these are settings that we can mess with over here for the links, okay? So all I need you to know is that particles can bounce off each other and they can link to each other. So if I now put this over here for starting, and I make a hydraulic press. So for me, that's gonna be a cylinder, but you could do it with whatever, because really, you might already expect this. All we're really doing is turning this, if I can do it, uh, into a collision animated mesh. So I'm gonna keyframe this here. Let's say over 50 frames, it goes down and squishes this, and then 20 frames later, it goes up. So this is our animation, right? Make that a collider. And then all we need to do, of course, it's not going to look good off the bat. Uh, but then make sure to hit the simulate button over here. Now, um, this isn't going to give us the exact results we want right out of the bat. That's what this tutorial is about how to like get better settings. But you can see like super simple, it's already making this somewhat hydraulic press animation. Okay. Uh, the issue is that these are kind of like too spongy and they return back and everything. So first of all, here's like the normal physics sim. I'm going to make this go a bit higher. Uh, the main thing that is happening here that's making it not burst apart and everything, as you can see, it kind of maintained its form. The particle links uh, just wouldn't break. And all we need to do is in the 3D emitter settings, go down to links, which we have a bunch of numbers for. It says how far we're going to search for links, how strong those links are, etc. Go to broken. Broken tells you how hard is it to tear apart a link so that they can now be free. The higher the number, the more impossible it is. So now if I reduce it to something like 0.2, and again, I hit simulate here. I don't just click play. That'll make that happen. I click simulate here. Now what we're going to see, now by the way, um, you're going to see that when we simulate it adds more frames to our um, timeline. This is just so that it does sub-stepping. Uh, but you can see now it actually tears apart. This truly excellent tutorial is sponsored by Skillshare, the number one place to learn things, whether that be photography, videography, or I guess like totally like unrelated skills. And while yes, you can just browse the huge catalog and just kind of like watch a course from beginning to end and learn stuff. But now there are learning paths where you more so pick a topic and there is more so a sequence of courses in a flow. So one of these type of paths 
that might be relevant to you as somebody that watches this channel is the Start Your Freelance Video Editing Career Path, which will not only show you, you know, how to edit, but how to find your voice through editing while you would make certain decisions. The second course you are going to find in this learning path is hone your visual style, discovering and developing your editing style. Some things that Ryan talks about is before you're even getting into your edit, what kind of inspiration are you looking for and what kind of mechanisms like kind of a mood board is one of these can you develop to kind of like funnel what it is you're going to do before you even start. So when you are ready to join Skillshare, I have a link in the description that you can click and the first 500 people who click that link will get a one month free trial of Skillshare and more tutorial. Doesn't look great, but it does tear apart and I can pause the simulation. You can actually resume it. And when you're done with it, current cache to bake, which will let us play this back smoothly. So boom, hydraulic press uh, animation, nothing crazy. How do we make this look more interesting without getting like in the weeds here? Well, not only can we make like the particles easier to break, but we don't need to make it so that each particle is as strong or each link is as strong as another. So take the random brokenness and let's make it like 30% or something. Uh, this will make it so it's not such a clean break in half kind of thing, unless that's what you want, okay? Uh, I'm just gonna save this, I'm gonna call it advanced press and this is going to be available i misspelled it but this is going to be available on patreon with the cache in here so it doesn't matter if you actually have the uh, simulation molecular plus or not um but okay uh we have made this simulation well i guess we haven't re-simulated it with our randomness so free all bakes simulate again um the less sub steps you have the faster it's going to be but the less act accurate so let's just play that and okay it still kind of splits in half but there is more interesting things going on here okay so generally i'm happy with this but before we like turn this into a thing that we render uh one or two things i want to change i want the hydraulic press to go lower so it squishes it even more so it goes even further down we can actually hide this 3d emitter just like we could hide a particle system and then we can enable it. Um, it's very fast, the, the solver, which is impressive. Um, so like I said, a couple things I wanna change. I want this collider to have different properties. So I want to increase the, or maybe decrease the friction so that it's a smooth metal and it can kind of slide around it. And uh, in the reverse, uh, for the floor where the particles are eventually going to settle, I don't want them sliding around. So I'm going to basically maximize friction and dampening and maybe stickiness such that when they fall, they have a minimal amount of bounce, but they kind of stay there and they don't slide. Final thing is uh, we can actually, so we've kind of been seeing what this looks like. Again, make sure to hit the button to simulate, but uh, we know what this is looking like, and now we could say, let's see what it looks like with more particles. So you want to start off small, refine your look, and then kind of go more advanced here. So I'm going to divide by 1.5. The smaller this number, the more particles you have. So this is the before, right? And this is the after. And you're going to see that reflected over here. This says how many particles are in the system. Uh, the total is what it was before. So again, if I multiply by 1.5, these numbers basically sync up. Divide by 1.5. Uh, whenever these numbers are incoherent, they're not equal to each other, hit refresh because we're going to have these sub steps, how long it takes to simulate, automatically refresh. So now uh, you can see our sub steps are equal to 12. Why did it go from 8 to 12? Well, if you think about it, I made our voxels 1.5 times smaller. I divided by 1.5. So we have more voxel. So we need to simulate for longer. So now we take eight and multiply it by 1.5, which is exactly what gives us the number 12. Okay. Um, other things I should mention, you can actually randomize the uh, size of these uh, voxels, which you're not going to see in viewport, but will, will actually happen in a simulation. But I think I'm happy with this. I think Final thing before we simulate is this only happens for like 70 frames. 
uh, the animation. So I don't want this to last any longer than 100 frames. And now that this is 100, right, and our sub steps are equal to 12, if I hit simulate, you think it multiplies it by 12, but I guess it adds 12 times more frames, which is why it's 1300 instead of uh, 1200. But this thing is so fast, you can literally like look around uh, the viewport while it happens. And you can see it's doing a pretty good job at compression. On the bottom, it's getting a little glitchy, uh, which is something uh, you can resolve by having more sub steps or actually changing some of these collision settings that we didn't talk about. But this is just a basic tutorial uh, because I want to talk about a molecular plus more in the future because it's a great add-on and it's free and I didn't know it existed up until now. Um, but I feel like the hydraulic press is a quick way to get good results without doing like anything. So we're going to let that settle and it seems like basically nothing's happening up until this point. So maybe when it gets to frame 80, I'm going to pause it. I'm going to make it a bake. So it's actually like, you know, a... Um, how do I want to say this? It's a blunt cache that we don't need to calculate. It's just there and we can preview it quickly. I'm going to make this go until frame 80. And let's see what this looks like at speed. So I click play and boom. Again, you can get more detail by making the voxel size smaller. But here's a cool feature about Molecular Plus. I'm going to hide the light and the camera cool feature about Molecular Plus is when you're done with your simulation, uh, you kind of don't want to view it as this, what we call a halo particle system. Uh, what I mean by that is if we go to these particles and go to the render settings, again, under the hood, it's just manip manipulating a particle system. So you can change any particle settings over here and it will actually affect things, especially if you set this to emitter instead of 3D grid. But uh, we could view this as a halo, as objects. By the way, for objects, you could have something like Suzanne over here. And then to view that, I wonder if we could just instance Suzanne. Yeah, we can. So you're going to see a bunch of tiny Suzannes here. Uh, you could do whatever you want. But I'm going to set this to Halo. And then that cool feature I talked about and went on a tangent is in the tools. It, there's basically only one tool here is you can convert to geo nodes. What that does is it adds in a new object. It might be under my face here, but it adds in a new object that basically takes our simulation. And as you can see, turns it into what is basically a bunch of points. But under the hood, you can see it has our particle system imported and it does geo nodes such that when we go to our geometry nodes, you could see it as a bunch of points. At, at this point, uh, you can do anything you want to it. You can uh, bring the scale down, you can bring it up, you can randomize it, but you can also do the same kind of instancing as before. So I can instance on points. If I want to see this as a bunch of spheres, I could connect that right there. Uh, let's lower the resolution and make this thing smaller, even smaller, maybe even smaller, I guess, these numbers should probably match up. And now you can see we have like a visible particle system. But uh, because this is particle based at the moment, uh, one thing I would recommend is I'm going to hide this for now, but we can play with it later. Mm, no, no, other way around. We're going to keep this. Uh, one thing we can do is if you go to the render panel, you're not going to see anything because really this is just a bunch of points that aren't renderable. However, if you go to Cycles, Cycles Render Engine actually seems to render points. And this is going to be the fastest way to render this simulation, right? There's no instancing. It's literally just rendering raw particles that, yes, uh, we can actually change the color of. But because when we're in geometry nodes, we can do some things after the fact. So instead of just having a radius of 0 0.003, Let's vary it a little after the fact. Again, you could vary it in simulation, but whatever. I'm going to multiply 0 0.03333 by this random value, connect that here. And now you can see these aren't all the same because I'm taking this uh, initial size and saying sometimes make it 
a hundred times this or sorry, a hundred percent of that size, so the same thing, but other times make it as little as zero. You can see the variation here. I'm gonna make it go as small as 60% and as high as maybe 110%. You can play with these numbers, but just this little thing adds some uh, visual interest, especially once this kind of blows up here. So this is before, this is after, it's pretty subtle, so let's make that a bit more intense. And that is gonna make it look more granular and like things are going on, but remember, Everything here at this point is basically points, so you could do whatever uh, you want to this, including uh, making some advanced calculations for shading. Speaking of which, we're gonna get to rendering in a second. I'm gonna set, sh nope, that's not what I wanted. I wanna set material over here. Let's give this a material. So each point is gonna inherit this material. And for now, we're not gonna get too fancy, but because we're using this default material, uh, you could do uh, whatever you want here, okay? So let's make this a rough kind of like basically blue, but pretty dark kind of thing, okay? And uh, now when we not render this, but basically look through the timeline, we get something like this. Now, you might be wondering with my original render that I showed you, uh, the colors actually change. In this case, it was actually based to velocity. So the magnitude of velocity shows how black or white it is. Um, but how do you get that kind of information out of this? You could do it in uh, geometry nodes, but remember under the hood, under the hood, uh, what this really is, is a particle system. So I'm just gonna show this uh, particle system over here. Because it's a particle system, we can extract particle information. So I'm just gonna do kind of the same thing I did before. It's a bit slower, but it does let us um, get this extra detail. So here I've made a sphere. This is gonna be the object we're instancing. And for my particle system now, I'm gonna render it as a object instancing of our sphere. So now you can see a bunch of uh, tiny spheres that uh, should be shown up just like that. And then in theory, if I change the material of this uh, sphere over here, that material will go over here. So let, let, let's see what that does, okay? So I go to the sphere, I make a material, I make that red, great, now the rest of it's red. The cool thing about using particles that I just hinted at is now you can use the particle info. Um, I'm sure there's probably a way to bring this information into GeoNodes. We would need to think about it. We need to think about it. Actually, let's just look really quickly. So in geometry nodes, what attributes do we have? Just position and radius. That is what I thought. And if we just look at the base geometry, yeah, we don't get much else. So uh, for now, we're gonna use this new method where, where, Again, uh, what we change this material by shows up, but this particle info gives us a bunch of details. Like, can we pick a random thing for each particle? Can we pick the location or the velocity? This is what's actually gonna be useful to me. Um, and the velocity is basically showing, you can see it's flickering. It shows what direction the particle's moving in in every single frame. You also have angular velocity, which I believe is where you can store UVs if you wanted to but I'm just gonna store velocity. And by the way, if you don't wanna see this original cube here, uh, you can hide the emitter and make sure to also do that in viewport so you don't see it. Uh, my shader was basically the velocity. What I did is I took the magnitude of it, so I don't care about the direction, but just how much velocity there was. And you can see as this slows down, it kind of gets a bit more black although it does flicker a bit, uh, which I kind of resolved by, um, well, first of all, by making it a BSDF, so the shading kind of like blends together a bit, as you can see, uh, but I also use some anti-flicker effects in uh, DaVinci. Uh, but you can do anything you want to this after the fact, right? I could send this through a color ramp where black goes to red for low velocity and white goes to green for high velocity and you can get something like that. But for my render, I just kind of use this raw input over here. 
and that's kind of the essence of it really. So I just kind of set up a camera, which I can find over here. I set up a camera, which I made a one by one aspect ratio, zoom out, so we can actually see the whole frame. And you can see how easy at least the simulation step was here. This really is kind of like the beginner's um, simulation. And let's actually, for the render, I'm going to bring up this floor so you can't see it in the background. Maybe also give it a bit of a bevel, shade smooth. I'm just going to set up my camera here. I'll be done with it in a second, don't worry. So the camera, I don't want to see anything outside the viewport, so pass or part out or inside the uh, thing. The most important thing, by the way, I should mention for this is uh, when you render, what's going to really kind of give it that oomph is uh, make sure to enable motion blur, which is perfectly, it works perfectly, right, uh, with point rendering. Points are really good at actually rendering motion blur. So let's just render a frame to make sure this works. We'll do 200 samples. We'll set it to optics. Let's do a render. And because it's not many particles, it's not going to take too long. And you can see that very nice motion blur. Again, to get a more granular sim like I had, you, um, you basically uh, have more particles. But that is basically how I did the hydraulic press simulation. So I'm going to make the original file with the um, more particles going on uh, available on Patreon, which should just have a cache um, zipped with it. We'll see how I do it. Uh, but yeah, make sure to join Patreon to uh, get blend files for literally $5 you get. Not just this blend file, uh, the good one, but everything I've made over the last four years, right? All of it's on Patreon. You could get that for a dollar. You get early access to tutorials, including this one. And yeah, that is it. Hydraulic press.